Okay, my friends, uh, so we're talking a little bit more about how this idea that maybe we shouldn't be so biased. Maybe we shouldn't be, you're either keto or you're not keto. You're either keto or you're high carb. What if, and a lot of people that have been low carb and fat adapter for a while, utilize that metabolic process, uh, you know, the upregulation in mitochondrial biogenesis, the downregulation in the inflammatory response uh, that's associated with a ketogenic diet, and then also the ability um, you know, to recover faster because your heart rate variability, your parasympathetic branch of your autonomic nervous system is better. There's a lot of benefits to keto, but when you train, and if you train at an intense level, and if you're physically fit and you're non-diabetic and you don't have head trauma, you know, and you don't have cancer, but you're relatively healthy, guess what? When you add in carbohydrates to that, uh, that workout, you can get better performance. So the whole point here is like, because so many people now are, are interested in the ketogenic diet, they are becoming so myopic and biased and, and there, you know, there's like, there's like no room for carbohydrates. It's either like you're keto or you're not. And I, I'm going to sit here and put my foot in this, in this, in the sand and just say, Hey, look, if you like this YouTube channel and you like the content that we offer, just know that we stand for sport specific and smart. As Danny Lennon said, smart application of carbohydrate consumption. And if that doesn't sit well with you and you don't like it, you can unsubscribe and, and not tune in. I won't be offended, but but because uh, I want to encourage all of you to be a little bit more open-minded. I want you to, to garner all the benefits of keto, all the anti-inflammatory benefits, the increase in heart rate variability as Alessandro Ferretti has talked about. And as we recently caught up with, with Peter Defty, I'm going to share with you about his company here in just a second, Vespa. Super awesome stuff. This can really help you fat adapt. I put the rough cut of the interview with Peter Defty in our insider circle. So just click the link below this video. But you know, suffice it to say, I mean, we were talking like, and he was sharing, he works with a lot of endurance athletes, high you know, volume, really competitive people. He gets them fat adapted. And then you know, during high intensity training rides, during races, guess what? He encourages them to have carbohydrates because you know, even in his own words, he says, this is like a performance enhancing drug. So point of this video is we go into the holiday season, keto can really help you do a lot of beneficial things in terms of like, you know, the temptations to eat crappy food and drink alcohol and uh, have kind of impulsive behaviors. But don't be so worried. You know, if you do have a little bit, car little bit of extra carbohydrates, try and get a workout in because you're going to notice having that calorie surplus, having those carbohydrates around exercise can enhance your performance. All right, so I'm just going to check in, make sure. Oh my gosh, the feed says it's still crap. Um, all right, so it's all good. So guys, how is the feed and the audio and everything like that? Um, can hear you now, which is good. Okay, so it does say that my Wi-Fi is not, for some reason today, guys, my Wi-Fi is a little slow. So I apologize if there's some buffering issues. Um, but it says we're here. All right, so it looks like, so Keto Case says, I love the info on this channel, cool. So so Keto Case, are you okay with us saying that you, like, you can have carbohydrates around um, high volume, short duration, high intensity exercise? I hope you're cool with that. Um, it, let me just, there's different people in the world that I mean, obviously we're all metabolically, epigenetically, our microbiomes, everything is so different. And so we all respond differently to different macronutrient profiles. And, and this changes with, with time, with life, with life load, with sleep load, with travel, all these, the, you know, our body is in, in a constant state of flux. But sometimes, you, you know, we hear something is healthy right? Like the ketogenic diet. We're, we're new to this. Maybe we, we get excited about it. Uh, and, and then, so we start to say, well, if ketones are good, then carbohydrates are bad. You know, we, we live in this like binary environment. You're, you know, you're, you're rich or you're poor, you drive a nice car or a crappy car, you know, you exercise or you're sedentary, right? We, we live in this yes or no binary system. So I think I, I just want you to avoid getting into this trap that, okay, I like keto and I like all the benefits of keto. So therefore, uh, carbohydrates are bad. That's a bad place to start. That, that, that is. Now, um, obviously, there's a lot of benefits to cycling your carbohydrates, to becoming more fat adapted, but don't just throw out carbohydrates altogether, right? And, and just think about the big picture. What are, you, what are your goals? Are you, are you an athlete? Do you care about your strength? Do you care about your physical performance? You know, there's a lot of benefits to going out there and having a really hard workout to, to, you know, getting your ass kicked in the gym, brain derived neurotrophic factor, 
mitochondrial biogenesis, mitochondrial biogenesis, sorry, um, upregulation of all these different intracellular signaling pathways, AMPK, there, there's a million things. When you work out very, very vigorously and hard, so something we share with our members in the insider area and all that workouts and how to do that, um, there's a lot of health benefits associated with that. Now, if you're always compressing that feeding window, if you're keto 99.7 of the time, that workout, I know some of you are gonna get upset with this, but that workout may not be as good as it could be if you were to cycle in carbohydrates around that exercise. And so what does this look like for you? You have to figure it out. You know, This isn't like there's like one formula um, and one way to do this, one protocol. This is tinkering and testing and playing around with it and seeing what, what works for you in your sport. I'm gonna turn down my computer because it's bright here and it's creating weird light. Um, so, so that's tinkering and testing, and that's what we're here for. That's what our insider area is for. That's what our Keto Lean Masterclass is to help you kind of figure this stuff out. And uh, you know, we're going to share like ten plus years of low carb experience with you uh, in those areas in the private Facebook group and all that sort of stuff. But even if you don't join that, just I, I would say you need to try and play around with this stuff and and don't fall into this binary. It's either you're low carb, high fat, or you're high carb. Like, there is a happy medium and you can be mostly low carb, mostly keto, you know, 85% of the time. And then when you want to have a really good workout, uh, when you, you want to switch things up, throw in the carbohydrates, have a calorie surplus, have an extra feeding window, and you'll be blown away. If you're physically active, blown away by your sports performance. So that's the point of this video. That's the point I'm talking about it because there's a lot of people now in the strength community they're getting so annoyed with our with with the keto people with us with you and we want to prevent that like if we want people to start thinking differently and realizing that you can be mostly keto fat adapted and sprinkling carbohydrates for sport specific applications then that's how we're going to get more and more people to adopt this way of living that's how we can improve health on the bigger picture and that's my goal that's a goal with this channel you know um I would love to go to an airport or a hotel and see for breakfast they have eggs and avocado instead of cereal and croissants and muffins and processed orange juice. That stuff is wrecking our, our world. It's, it's wrecking the environment. It's wrecking our health. It's affecting productivity. It's affecting business in a major negative way. And so we, I, I would love for people just to become more fat adapted. And that's why we do these interviews. That's why I make these videos. That's why you're here too. I know you're... Yeah. And part of that message. So um, there's a lot of comments here. I wanna, I'm not just going to ramble on. Let's do this. He says, all right, uh, no need to cycle on and off. Okay, so Jason, uh, please explain yourself because uh, I'm going to call bullshit on that. You need, I, I really do believe, and not just me. Look, to process dietary fat, um, it, you know, at, at the high levels that you need to be keto, particularly if you're, if you have a, a lot of body mass and you're muscular, um, that, that, that's stressful on your, on your gallbladder, on your liver, synthesis of bile, uh, digestive machinery, and so forth. So uh, I think carb cycling is woven into the framework of the ketogenic diet. And, uh, you know, like unless you have cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, or you're morbidly obese, you know, type 2 diabetic, something like that, a disease state, I think it, it, it's really silly to not carb cycle. And in fact, your ancestors carb cycled, whether you want to believe it or not, Jason, because availability of, of nutrients was constantly undulating and fluctuating. So falling into just one way of eating all the time um, is, is myopic, it's, it's narrow-minded, and it's, it's, in, it's incongruent with our body's uh, biology. Okay, so Elsa says, I have hypothesized. Oh, I, I have hypothyroid. Sorry, it's hard to read this stuff. I have hypothyroid and adrenal fatigue. Been doing keto for a year. Uh, would adding carbs help regulate my thyroid? Uh, I don't know, Elsa. You got to figure it out for yourself. Um, certainly throwing in more carbohydrates. Now, when I say throwing in carbohydrates, that's not like Coca-Cola. Obviously, we're talking about real phytonutrient-dense food, rich in fiber, that's seasonally and locally available to you. So that's what I mean. So it's December when we make this. What would be a seasonally available carbohydrate for me? Um, butternut squash, for example, that we have grew in our garden that's sitting there waiting for us to eat. Acorn squash. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about gluten-free bread that's loaded with fake food uh, and processed high glycemic carbohydrates that's devoid of phytonutrients and fiber. Okay, so when we think about the carbohydrates that are healthy for our microbiome, that are synergistic and congruent with the ketogenic 
lifestyle, we're talking fiber and phytonutrient rich, like butternut squash, just carotenoids in there, uh, and so forth. Still showing uh, still image. What's up with that, Jason? Um, huh. It says it's, it says it's working for me here. Um, so Catherine says, love, love, love this. Cool, Catherine, thanks for that. Steve says, I run intervals, mostly keto, plus one meal a day. I like fruit and some, uh, and so forth. Okay, cool, so 25 grams of net carbs. Okay, if that works for you, right on. Uh, Slacker Dan says, I'm 45. I started weightlifting the first time about two months ago. Really seeing the benefits. Okay, cool, Slacker Dan. Um, Liz says, are we still waiting? No, we're, we're on, Liz. Um, unless my computer's really acting up again, which... Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's not. It says we're on. Okay. Um, okay, Matthew says, I heard the brain alone needs 12% fuel from carbs. Look, so so Matthew, th th yeah, the brain needs fuel. No, no uh, ifs, ands, or buts about that. But that's what ketones are for. Right? In the context of a low blood sugar, ketones are the alternative fuel substrate for the brain. And uh, that can be utilized, particularly if you're insulin resistant, where you know, the brain... Um, can't, you know, in the context of a, a pre-diabetic or diabetic or someone that's insulin resistant, um, getting glucose into the neurons can be a little bit challenging because uh, insulin mediated uptake is a little dysfunctional. Check out the podcast with Amy Berger we did last uh, April. All right. Um, Keto K says, um, one oatmeal and almond milk, sometimes stevia, sweet potatoes, are my cup choices. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, oatmeal has been used by athletes and bodybuilders. I remember back in like, I started eating oatmeal in 1996. Uh, oatmeal can be great, you know, but switch it up. You know, oatmeal is still, still, you know, grain derived, processed and heated and comes in a package, you know. Try to have something that grows straight from the ground and just put it as, you know, minimal processing, something local. Uh, I doubt you're growing the oats in your backyard. So if, if you can get something more local uh, and seasonally available, keto case, that'd be even better. So. Um, let's see right here. Catherine says, uh, do you, uh, cycle for a few days or for just one meal? Yeah. Um, so this is a great question. So the question is like, how often do you cycle? Like, is it a couple days in a row? Um, is it just like one meal? Wonderful, wonderful question. So <laughs> you're going to not like the answer. The answer is it depends. There, there's no one magic way to do this. I've heard different people say that they'll do, you know, one carb cycling day out of every seven. They'll do two days out of every 14. I mean, they'll go, they'll go like 12 days, very low carb. These aren't athletes. These are just regular people that are doing uh, keto for brain health. Um, and so they do 12 days straight of very, very low carb and then two days of high carb. You know, I like to switch it up based upon what my activity is. You know, so this is incongruent with this idea that carbohydrates are like a perform a legal performance enhancing drug. So what I like to do is on like today, I'm going to do deadlifts. I'm going to do reverse deadlifts. I'm going to do squats, uh, a lot of volume. I'm going to kick up the intensity. Um, I'm not going to have a lot of rest periods built into that. And so I'm going to have carbohydrates after the workout, right? Uh, and maybe some during. If we, I, we don't have any bananas, unfortunately. I do have an apple in the fridge. We don't have a lot of fruit around uh, our house. So I'm going to have that on the way to the gym. You know, so have a little bit of carbs there. And then after the workout, you know, I'm going to have, we have two sweet potatoes that are ready to be cooked. So that's going to have after that workout, probably won't have a lot of carbohydrates outside of vegetables and onions and leeks and things like that until the weekend when I lift legs and back again on Saturday morning. So look, this is what I do, but keep in mind also the first time I was introduced to, you know, low carb, high fat style diet by my friend Greg in 2002, you know, just use that for fat loss purposes. Alessandro Ferretti, you know, kind of reignited this whole interest in ketogenic diets when he introduced um, this idea that ketosis improves heart rate variability to me. So I, I've been off and on, off and on, not keto necessarily, but low carb, high fat for quite a while. So that's what I personally do, you know, but, but if you've been a higher carb person for a while, uh, if you've been pre-diabetic, maybe you have a little bit of weight to lose. Maybe um, you just do one day a week, you know, and it also depends on your activity. Uh, how physically active are you? And when you're lifting, how intense is that? You know, is it kind of like, yeah, I'm going through the motions, doing this, or you're talking like you're going to failure. You couldn't do another rep even if someone paid you. Like if you're working out that intense, that will, <laughs> that's a good enough reason uh, and kind of excuse, if you will, 
uh, to have more carbohydrates. So that's just my tips. Some people will disagree with me, but th that's what I suggest. Um, I'm getting some feedback here. All right. I know guys, sometimes, I, you know, you being on right now, I'm super grateful for this. I know sometimes these live streams, there's audio issue or whatever. I try to use my regular camera that I film the interviews on to do these. It would be way easier just to set the iPhone up and I might start doing that less glitchy, but I like that, you know, in two years, I still want people to be able to watch this and benefit from it. So that's why I use my camera and stream it through Wirecast. So, um, oh, great question from Jack uh, Mazan. He says, do you use a nicotinamide riboside? Yeah, so it's a form of NAD. Um, uh, no, what I do use from my friend, uh, his supplement company, Seeking Health, Dr. Ben Lynch, I do use his NADH. So I, I like that and PQQ and a creatine as well. So I think those are really, really good. You know that um, the uh, nicotinamide riboside, it's pretty expensive. You know, it's like 70 bucks. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, I, I'm big into like saving money, investing money. We're doing a lot of work on our house and I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on supplements every month. So I'm trying to get the most with the least that I can get, like get the most out of those things. So I don't spend a lot of money on, on real specific stuff, but PQQ is great. NADH is good. Um, someone says one carby meal every four weeks is about my limit. All right. Well, so Spive21, I would love to know why are you keto? Is it for a health issue? And also, uh, how active are you? Please, please type in, number one, why are you keto? Number two, um, how physically active are you? Do you lift heavy weights? Okay, so, you know, I'll just say like last week we were filming in Los Angeles and I put the rough cuts into our Patreon members area. So check it out, Stephen Lynn, Peter Defty, Grace Lou. We got some really awesome footage last week that we're gonna post towards the end of January and February. But if you want to check out the rough cuts now, click the link below this video. They're in our members area. Super, these are amazing interviews. Uh, some of the best that we've had in the last couple of years. So check it out. But anyway, the point of that story is last week was, I was traveling a lot, you know, from uh, LA to San Francisco to Seattle and, and super busy. So it was like super low carb. You know, there was, there was no reason, um, to have more than two meals a day, there was absolutely no reason to carb cycle because it was inactive. So the point that I wanna convey here is if you're an athlete, uh, if you're active, uh, if you're training for something, particularly if you lift heavy or perform heavy, maybe you do cycling, don't be so afraid of these carbohydrates. They're, they're not evil around exercise. Um, all right, so someone says uh, lack of magnesium can cause anxiety. Okay, cool, all right. Um, that sounds good. So keto case is having carbs and fats in the same meal a bad idea. Ye uh, yeah, it, it can be. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the details here, but go uh, go into YouTube, type in David Perlmutter. You'll see the interview that he and I did, and we talk about this. So so you you, you know, um, you you can have like protein and carbs together. It's not always bad to have fats and carbs together, but having high carb and high fat is is not a good idea. Um, so that is about it. So uh, System of a Fox says, let's see here. What else we got, guys? Um, did you see Ron and Patrick's new video just posted? No, I don't watch your videos, um, but I hear they're good. Uh, let's see here. So someone else says, let's see. Okay, on now. Sometimes I eat starchy vegetables or carb cycle, but get into ketosis quickly. That's an awesome. So Spy of 21 again. So using starchy vegetables. I love, love that approach. Good idea. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Um, I think that's about it. Okay. So Nida says, I learned so much from this channel, studying nutritional therapy. Thank you, Nida. I especially agree with Mike, not keto yet, but trinkering with the idea. A a any tips on starting out? So Nida, of course, you know, we have a great masterclass, a keto lean masterclass. And, and I want to finish off with this. Um, in January, what we're going to do is we're going to review our labs together as a group and talk about different things that can not only help us become better fat burners, but help us become more healthy, right? That's the goal. Hopefully that's your goal for going keto. So Nida, uh, just, I'll put the link below this video, but it's high intensity health.com forward slash keto dash lean. Um, but I'll put the link there. So you're not like trying to search for it. But that's the best place to start because you know I think a, a good foundational tool that a lot of us can benefit from is is detoxing a little bit, getting gut health improved. Because if you don't have good gut health uh, and you're starting to eat a ton, of, you know, 120, 150 grams of fat per day, 
uh, it can be a bit of a challenge and uh, you can feel nauseous, feel like things aren't working. And so that's why um, improving gut health beforehand can be helpful. So I think I'm gonna sign off guys, but if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this and joining our Keto Lean Masterclass, we're gonna have a kickoff uh, towards before Christmas and then really launch this thing in January. Again, every four to six weeks, we kind of relaunch it, have a new group, a new cohort go through and people have really benefited from that. So I share with you tools that I've learned from all these experts that I've, you know, I've been trying to learn from and, and working on the short film that we're working on. Uh, and combine that knowledge with a lot of the research that I've done on the microbiome and to give you kind of a, a curated, you know, short and sweet version to help, you know, cut down your learning time. So that is about it, my friend. So um, as I said, I'm gonna go lift weights. If you're lifting today, uh, let me know what you're lifting. I'll, I'll be watching the comments afterwards. I would love to know. Um, so Ashley says, smart or is there a better strategy? Hmm. Ashley, what do you mean by that? I, I, maybe I'm missing the uh, other part of your comment. Uh, Rodrigo says, would it be great to see a li list of supplements used on a daily basis. Rodrigo, got you covered, my man. So we're gonna do another video on this uh, next week. So I'll, I'll do that for sure, buddy. Um, boron, boron. So yeah, boron uh, is good for hair, skin. Now, boron, uh, blood sugar as well. Um, I was thinking of biotin. I get boron and biotin confused. You don't need a lot of extra boron. Um, but biotin has some really good beneficial properties, particularly if you have raw eggs, you're gonna to need to have more biotin. Um, Catherine says, you've been helpful. Thanks, Catherine, so awesome. Um, Erica says, Mike, do you recommend any particular protein powder which is a vegan source? Yeah, it's such, Erica, such a great, are you okay with eggs? I know you said vegan, but what about vegetarians? So Erica, um, if you hop on over to my, my business Facebook page, I just did a video on this. Uh, so, so I'll post it in the comments below here, but go over to facebook.com forward slash Mike Mutzel MS, facebook.com forward slash Mike Mutzel MS. And I did a video on this very, very topic on the protein powder thing. And I think you'll think it's interesting. Um, and if you're watching the replay, I'll put the link in the comments, uh, below this. So you can see the video that I'm referring to. So Ashley says I lift regularly, but can't get rid of my belly fat. So you avoid carbs. So Ashley, okay. Thanks for that. Okay. So Ashley says, you know, she, she's curious about the carb cycling, I believe, and she lifts regularly. So, so Ashley, on days where you're doing higher volume, or a lot of intensity, uh, sprinkle in carbohydrates. Because if, you, if you're always doing the same thing, your body is going to adapt. And that's one of the benefits of throwing in higher carb days. And so don't be afraid, even if you have a little weight to lose, throw that in there, you'll notice that your stomach may look even flatter after that higher carb day. Okay, Ashley, so hopefully that helps. Uh, hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna sign off, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please tell a friend or family member to subscribe to High Intensity Health. Uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more about some of the work that we do and, and get in on our inner circle, please go to highintensityhealth.com forward slash insider. And if you wanna connect um, on a more daily basis on Instagram, uh, my wife and I, I'm at Metabolic Mike on Instagram, and we share a ton of stories on nutrition, fitness, and all that good stuff. So. Uh, on our Instagram story. So definitely, as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll catch you. we got a really good interview coming with Lynn Patrick that is all about the liver, the liver's health, environmental toxins, and keto adaptation. It's a good one. You're going to dig it. So I'm going to go to the gym. Hope you have a good evening, and we will catch up with you soon. Thanks so much.